Hello, everybody. So today I would like to share with you how I used Postman, the Postman app, uh, specifically in helping me while I'm working with APIs. Okay, so if there are APIs that I want to get a quick check on to make sure they are returning uh, certain data that I need, or if I need to make sure that the server side validations are working postman is my go-to app now if you do not know anything i've mentioned if you do not know what the postman app is if you don't know what an api is that's fine that's fine i will be as thorough as i can as we go through the video um but that, that is loaded to be honest with you right it's loaded um obviously this lesson is not about apis or even how to download the postman app what i really want to show you quickly is how i use it that is the purpose of this lesson um so if you are familiar with uh, the postman app and you don't know how to use it this is a great video for you so keep watching um, but either way, I'm going to show you where to download the Postman app and then you can follow along as I tell you how I use it. So to download the Postman app, and I will tell you what Postman is, if you do not know that, to download, um, to follow exactly, um, what I'm doing right now, you might need to download the Postman app. Go to postman.com forward slash downloads and you can download the windows app i'm using windows so you can download the window version now after you download you follow the installation process and it's really quick this way you get uh, it might ask you to register or login which i've already done um but this is where you get this is my workspace and from here i can decide what i need to use it for um so what is the postman app the postman app is an application that helps you in val in checking your apis now if you don't know what an api is um this is a quick rundown right an api is basically a web address right uh, for for browsers is a web address that returns you raw data or is a web address that you send data to. So that's what an API is in summary. So for example, I could have an API, which I'm going to show you. Actually, let's, let's go. How about we do this? Uh, I'm going to show you an example uh, of an API that I want to use for this lesson. Um, so, but that's what an API is. Something that returns you raw data. And I will show you where your raw data is, or that you use to send to send information to send data. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I plan to do this. This is the website I'm working on, and this actually. Um, I'm working on a website that's my own. It's my my company's website. So what I what I want to do is when you go to my website and you enter your name, your email, and your password. Okay. The, your information is being sent through an API that I created. And I'm going to show you what the API is. It's basically a web address, like www.com slash register or something, right? So what I want to do is that API, I want to make sure that whoever sends this information, when that information reaches my computer or my server, 
Um, and by the way, I manage my server. Uh, this website will be fully hosted when it's ready. Um, and that might be a video for another time. But if you do have question on how to set up a server, um, any server related, hit me up on the uh, in the chat comment, and uh, I, might, I might be able to help. So when you go to my website on your computer and you send your information, it's going to come to my server here. And my server will check if any of these fields are empty. That's why you ha I have this red asterisk. If any of these fields are empty, my server is going to reject your request and it's going to I'm going to send you, I, I I'm, it's going to send you a message that hey you did uh you left the name field empty okay so that's kind of the workflow when you go to my website so what i want to do with the postman is to check that to check that when you make a request when you come to register, when you make your request, you add your name, your email, your password, that my server is actually checking that you've submitted your name and email and password. Um, and what the response are, okay? That is a lot of talk. I, my, my apology if it is too much. Let's get to action, okay. So when you, when you download the Postman app on your desktop, um go ahead and find create a request this can be found under overview okay so let's exit the overview and see when you click on this plus um you should see okay this um directly takes me to what i wanted what i wanted to do all right let's uh okay my workspace open my workspace okay so this is my workspace okay it has my name remember i told you that it will ask you to log in so on the right where it said get started click create a request and here i want to make a request to an api but in my own case i am sending information Remember what I told you an API is? So in my own case, I am sending an information to my server. So I'm gonna choose post. Now just a quick aside, okay? Just a reminder. When you go to my website, you enter your information. It's gonna, my website is gonna take your information and send it to my own server here at home. So this, is what that is. So that's why I choose post because when you go to my website, you are sending information. Okay. Now get, put, patch, all of these have different uh, uses, but for now it's just post. Okay. Now this is my API HTTP. HTTP. I, ha I have done this before. So that's why the address is already there. I am, and I am developing locally, so that's why it's localhost. So HTTP localhost 300 slash API slash registration. This address, this web address is my API that I developed to take your information and send it to my server. And because I want to make sure that when it takes your information, it's doing the thing I asked it to do. Basically, it's going to check to make sure that you actually uh, put in a username, a, 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 a name, an email, and a password. So to make sure that it's not empty, none of those fields are empty. Okay. So we know what the post is and uh, we know what this is. This is basically my API. Now, you should see some tabs here. So like params, authorization, headers, body, and so on. What I, what I, what the way I structure this API is to use body. 
okay? You can send an information from here to my website using either params or even the headers or body. I chose body when I made this API. So my server will be looking inside the body object for your information, okay? Sometimes it's params. And if you don't know what this is, that's fine. But my own is body. When you make your API, these are some of the things that um, you need to make decisions for. But the most common, the most common, at least that I use, is the body. All right, so that's why I chose body. And then we have none, form data, and x slash ww form URL encoded. That is the manner with which I am sending the data to my server. I'm not sending it as a form data. Now, if you don't know what this is, that's fine. Maybe this will help you to actually go and read more about how to embed information into a form and send that into the, into and send that across to another computer, right? Because that's what you are doing here. When you enter my website on your computer and you enter your information, your information is being sent to my computer here. So by design, I chose this, okay? So now I'm gonna write a few items and I'm gonna tell you where they, where they come from, okay? Name, email, password. Sometimes in software engineering, it's, it's really hard to explain stuff without actually showing them. Anyways, that's at least my experience. When you show it to people, then they can really, really understand. Okay, I'm gonna tell you where this come from, okay? So you might, maybe something might have crossed your mind, you might start guessing. Name, come from name. Email come from email, password, um, come from password. That's where those came from. But I didn't do this in capital letter, okay? So even though you might get a hint that this is where they come from, um, I'll tell you for sure where those come from because they are under the key and value, okay? That's how I receive your information. When you go to my website, you add your name, they come in form of name, like key and value. So I, name, I named the name key, I named it lowercase name. The email is the key. And what you enter is the password. Okay, I hope this is making sense. But I will show you, let me open my Visual Studio. So this is my Visual Studio, okay? You see all of this function? This is the function that when you send your information, this is the function that takes it and saves your information on my database. I'm gonna expand it so you see. So it takes your information, okay? It checks it to make sure it's not empty and it saves it and it logs you in. This is the registration page, okay? So you come to my website, you register and it logs you in. If there's not any validation errors, meaning if you don't leave any fields empty, so I want to show you where this name, this key value, this key name comes from, okay? Now, the name, the, uh, the key name came from this, okay? 
the email name came from this and the password came from this. User creation date, don't worry about it. That is something I added. That is something that when you go to my website, you register, you don't have to add that. I will get that automatically. because so I want to get, I want to record when you, the date that you registered, okay? So these key and value, these key names, that is where they came from. Sometimes uh, if, let's say I collect um, username, okay? I'm going to add it here and I will come here. If I want to use it, I'll add it here. But I don't use that. So there's no need. So I'm going to remove that. So when you go to my website, I don't collect, I don't ask you for a username. And I'll show you quickly. See? I just collect name, email, and password. All right. So we are getting, I promise we are getting to the real meat of this video. Now, what I want to show you is when you, when you register on my website, my website will take your information and it will send it to my own computer or my server. I want to make sure that, let me go to that, to the page, registration page. I want to make sure that you, the name is not empty. Okay, let's check that. Let's come to Postman. Under key, under name, and then under value on the same uh, row, let's add something. Uh, well, we want to check that it's checking for a name. Okay, so let's leave it empty and see if my server will catch it. Okay, for email, let's add ademu.donkore at gmail.com. For password, let's choose anything, it doesn't matter. Okay. So when I submit this by clicking the send button on the top right, I should get a message that says, hey, the name field is empty. And I'll show you where that came from, okay? Let's tell ourselves what message we'll receive before we test it, okay? If you don't know what any of this is, right? It's okay. That's fine. That's fine. So right here, this if statement is what checks the username, uh, the name, the name field. You see, it it checks uh, password and name to make sure they're not empty. If they are, it should return missing fields. Missing fields. So let's go back to Postman. When I hit send, I should see my server should send me missing fields. Let's check that. All right, let's cross check. We have the name is empty, uh, email there is, password there is, there's value in there. Let's hit send. Watch, watch the bottom. Oh, there we go. Look at that, missing fields. This statement is directly from here. And I'm gonna prove it to you. Let's change, let's change what is um, here and add a, an exclamation mark, okay? Let's uh, make that request again by clicking send again. Voila. You see that exclamation, uh, exclamation mark? So 
my server is doing exactly what I told it to do. I'm telling you to check to make sure that the name is not empty. And if it is empty, send the user this information. So this is what I use Postman for. So I could really write like any check I want to do and quickly check it here. This is much easier to check than when you come here. It's much easier to check. And I'm not gonna, um, and let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you. Let's say I enter a wrong email, okay? Please provide a valid email. This message is coming from your own computer because you went to my website. I send the code to your computer, so it's not coming from my server. So because I have this validation check, it won't even allow me register. It will not send it. So it's kind of hard to, that's what it's, it's hard to check the actual server information. So that's why the postman, that's why I really use postman. If any of the things I said in the last two minutes doesn't make sense, that's fine. This is where you need to know. Um, use Postman to check your APIs. Okay. So let me leave it. Little space here. So I've already showed you if I send like um if i if i don't send any any value with the name key my server gets angry so let's try the email field so let me put something in the name field and remove it, the the value in the email field so name field has a value, email doesn't, is empty, password has a value, okay? Now, let's come to my code. What do I, what message do I send you if you don't add your email when you want to register with my website, okay? So for email, This is what I have. Let me, because this is what I was working on before I decided to show you the video. So I'm going to comment that. Let's concentrate on this. This function, this if statement and this if statement accomplish the same thing. So you're not missing anything. So when you send an empty field, an email empty field, my server, my computer is going to check. And if it is empty, it's going to send you this. The email you entered is invalid. So let's see that. This is what we expect. Let's see what we get. I'm going to hover. I'm going to go down to my postman area and just cross check things name, name, the name uh, value is, is not empty. There's something in there. Email is empty and password is empty. All right, let's hit send. Voila. Right here at the bottom, the email you entered is invalid. Where did that come from? That came from this section of the code. That's where it came from. And I can show you, I can prove it. Let's delete this and write coding is awesome. Please enter your email. All right, let's make that request again. So I'm going to come over to my postman. I'm going to hit send. Voila. Coding is awesome. 
please enter your email. Now, when I go to my website and I add, and I don't add any email, okay? And then I add some name, random name, some random password. I, I, you can't send it, you can't send a request. I program it so that you can't even send a request. And this field is, is gonna show you. So email cannot be empty. That is a different message than we had. Coding is awesome, please enter your email. Because this message is coming from my own computer. While this email cannot be empty, as soon as you download my website or you go to my website on your browser, that code is on your system, it's on your browser. So it's there on your system. Um, so it's not, this message is not coming from my server. So that is why it's important to, to scale your server, right? Let me show you. All right, this is no longer Postman. So if you are here for the Postman, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening up till now. Um, for the rest of the video, I'm gonna tell you why it's important to have these validation checks in your server. Um, if you are following, if you followed up till this moment, you will know that um, when you go to my website and you don't enter your email, it's gonna give you a different error message compared to what my server will actually send you if you bypass this, okay? So if you are able to say send and it worked and your password is empty, you, the, your email field is empty, this is what my server will send. But so this is the this is the key takeaway why it's important to do both client side validation and server side validation. At minimum, I would suggest you have a server side validation. This is why someone could let's say you go to my website, okay? You could go in and disable this so that if this is empty, you can actually send it. Right now you can't. So you can go to, let's go to inspect. Let's go to source. Okay. I'm not seeing any code. All right, let's go to network. Uh, okay, I think I might know why. I need to probably refresh. Ah, and here we go. So let's let's go to source. Uh, let's go to network tab. Register. We are looking for a JS file. I'm doing this quick. Um, so I apologize. But you see these scripts, if you are able to manually go into this code, you should see where I wrote the code to prevent you from sending anything. And you can, you can remove it. You can absolutely remove it. You can absolutely remove it. And if you remove it, then you can be able to send your form empty. You can be able to send your form empty. So if you do succeed in sending your form empty, my server will be able to be my last line of defense because you don't have access to my computer, so you can't go in and remove the code, right? So I hope. 
So that is why it's important to have, to always have a minimum of checks on your server when you are receiving any information from anyone, from anywhere. That is the end of this video. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any additions that you want to add, please let me know in the comment. Um, like this video, uh, that way it will help with the, you know, the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm, you know, the more likes it gets, um, the more YouTube will show this video when someone searches um, for Postman. So please hit the like and subscribe. That would be awesome as well. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comment area uh, what you think, um, if you have anything to add. Thank you and bye-bye.